Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Let me show you how to check the lid switch for continuity. Open the controls panel. Make sure you keep the door closed for this test. Disconnect the lid switch from the connecting block in the wire harness. Take a reading with your ohms meter between the two terminals on the outside of the connecting block of the lid switch. The reading should be zero ohms. If the reading is infinity, the lid switch is bad and you will need to replace it. You will need to make a jumper wire like this. To make the jumper wire, cut a piece of wire about three inches long. Apply solder to the ends to keep all the wire strands together. Flatten the ends a little bit, just enough to fit in the terminals of the lid switch connecting block. Disconnect the lid switch from the wire harness connecting block. Connect the jumper wire between the terminals of the tan and gray wires like this. Lower the controls panel. Set the timer dial on the spin cycle and pull the knob to turn the timer on. Open the washer door and connect the washer to the wall outlet. Keep away from the washer to avoid an electrical shock. Just keep an eye on it to see what the washer is doing. If the washer starts spinning, that tells you that the problem was the lid switch. All you have to do now is replace it. Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet and remove the jumper wire. Do not use the washer with the jumper. Just get a new switch and install it. Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Open the controls panel and remove the cabinet. Lay the cabinet on the floor or on a low table. Disconnect the green ground wire from the cabinet. Remove the two lid switch holding screws. This is the way to remove the lid switch connecting block. And this is the way to remove the wire harness from this holding clip. Go ahead and remove the wires. And this is the way to remove the plastic tube that holds the wire harness. Go ahead and remove the plastic tube and remove the complete lid switch assembly. Set the new lid switch assembly in place and install the harness connecting block. This is the way to open the wire holding clip. Go ahead and set the wires in place. This is the way to spread open the clip to install the wire harness holding plastic tube. Go ahead and install the plastic tube. Install the lid switch and screw in the two holding screws.
install the green ground wire to the cabinet. Install the cabinet on the controls panel and you're done replacing the lid switch. Let me show you how to check and replace the lid switch in a new style washer. There are no holes in the door frame or plungers in the door to activate the lid switch in a new style washers. Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Open the controls panel. Disconnect the lid switch wire harness. Take a reading with your own meter between the terminal in the middle and the terminal in the left. The reading should be 0 ohms with the washer door closed. If the reading is infinity, the switch is bad and must be replaced. This is how you bypass the list switch to make sure that the list switch is the problem. Cut a piece of wire and strip the two ends like this. Connect the wire between the terminal of the gray wire and the terminal of the white wire in the lid switch wire harness like this. Lower the controls panel and set the timer in the spin cycle and pull the knob to turn it on. Open the washer door to see if the washer spins. Connect the washer into the wall outlet. If the washer spins, then you know that the lid switch is the problem. Get a new one and replace it. To replace the lid switch, disconnect the ground wire. Press on the locking tab to release the switch and remove it. To install the new switch, set it in place and push down on the locking tab until it snaps in place. Connect the ground wire to the cabinet. And connect the wire harness to the lid switch. Close the controls panel and you're done. Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Let me show you how to replace the lid switch without taking the washer apart. Open the washer door and remove the two lid switch holding screws. Remove the bad switch and cut the wires close to the switch. Strip the tips of the harness wires and crimp two female quick disconnect terminals in the wires. The quick disconnect terminals part number is 64-3133 and you can get them at Radio Shack. Cut the switch from the new wire harness. Recut the wires to about 4 inch long. Strip the ends and crimp two female quick disconnect terminals like this. Connect the switch to the wire harness and set the switch in place. Screw in the two lid switch holding screws. Set the timer on the spin cycle and pull the knob to turn the timer on. Open the door on the washer. Connect the washer to the wall outlet. Use a flat screwdriver to activate the lid switch so the washer will spin with the door open. The washer starts spinning okay, then you did a good job.
I only recommend these procedures when there is no space to remove the cabinet or if you have a switch that it has a different connecting block then you go ahead and use this procedure otherwise use the regular one let me show you how to replace the lid switch without having to take the washer apart this technique is used mainly when the washer is in a place that is hard to move or there is no space to remove the cabinet disconnect the washer from the wall outlet open the washer door and remove the two lid switch holding screws remove the bad lid switch and cut the wires close to the switch cut the wires of the new switch about four inches long I use shrinking tube for insulation if you don't have shrinking tube use electrical tape strip about one inch of insulation on the new switch wires and slip the shrinking tube over the wires like this strip about one inch of insulation on the wire harness wires splice the wire harness wires and the switch wires together use the soldering gun to solder the connections move the shrinking tube into position and use a mask to shrink the tubes set the lid switch in place and screw in the two holding screws set the timer dial on the spin cycle and pull the knob to turn the machine on open the washer door and plug the washer in the wall outlet use a flat screwdriver to activate the lid switch this way the washer will spin with the door open if the washer spins okay then you did a good job use this technique when you can't move the washer or the space is too small to remove the cabinet or if the switch you have has a different connecting plug otherwise replace a complete switch assembly let's say that you put a load of clothes in the washer to be washed come back an hour later to pick up the clothes and they're dripping wet this is what you need to do to find out why the washer did not spin set the timer on the spin cycle and pull the knob to turn the washer on if you hear noises like these ones and the washer doesn't seem to be spinning open the washer door and use a flat screwdriver to activate the lid switch if the washer won't spin do the following remove the screwdriver close the door turn the washer off and set the timer on the regular cycle and let it fill if the washer motor starts but it won't agitate and make noises like this close the washer door turn the timer off and set the timer on the spin cycle and pull the knob to turn the machine to drain the water out after the washer is empty you will need to take the washer apart to check and replace the bad motor coupler let me show you how the motor coupler works in a direct drive Whirlpool, Kenmore, Roper, KitchenAid, Estate and the newest 
Tuplo washer made by Maytag. This is the motor coupler. The motor coupler has three pieces. Two plastic pieces, sometimes called fingers, and a round rubber piece with holes on it that we will call the coupler. In this view you can see a broken motor coupler. The fingers are broken and the center piece, the rubber coupler, is missing. Most likely was shredded by the fingers before they broke off. When the motor runs, it won't transfer torque to the transmission and the washer will not spin or agitate. This is how a good motor coupler should work. When the motor runs, the finger attached to the motor will turn the rubber piece in the middle. The rubber piece in the middle will turn the fingers attached to the transmission and the washer will agitate or spin according to the direction that the motor is running at the time. And that's how the motor coupler works. So when the motor coupler breaks, you will get no agitation or spin on the washing machine. Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Open the controls panel and remove the cabinet. Lean the washer against the wall and put something like paint cans under it to keep it in place. Make a loop from a piece of rope to hold the pump. Undo the pump holding clip with a needle nose pliers and remove the top one. Remove the pump from the motor and hold it to the side with a piece of rope. Remove the screws from the motor bracket and remove the motor wire harness. Undo the bottom bracket using a flat screwdriver like this. Hold the motor with your left hand and undo the top bracket. Lower the motor a little bit and turn the top bracket quarter of a turn and take it right out. And remove the motor. Make sure you don't drop the motor, you could break something on it. Leave the bottom bracket in place. Use a flat screwdriver to remove the plastic piece from the transmission shaft, like this. Set the new plastic piece in the transmission shaft. Use an extension and sucker wrench to drive it in. Place it on the middle and start tapping nice and easy until the plastic piece is flush with the transmission shaft. Just be careful you don't break it. Install the round rubber piece, which is the coupler, and make sure that one of the empty holes is pointing down like at 6 o'clock. Remove the bad plastic piece from the motor. Place the motor so the shaft is touching the wall so the shaft will not move. Place a new plastic piece on the shaft. Use the extension and the sucker wrench and tap it in nice and easy until it's flush with the motor shaft. Place a flat piece of wood on top of the bottom bracket to help you support the motor. Make sure the four rubber grommets are in the motor. Also point one of the fingers down like at 6 o'clock. Set the motor on top of the piece of wood. Align the motor and set it in place. Hold it with your right hand and remove the piece of wood. Install the top holding bracket. Align the bracket and push the motor up until the bracket falls in place. Place your left hand under the bottom bracket and push up until it snaps in place. Be careful you don't pinch your fingers. Install the two screws and install the wire harness. Install the bottom pump holding clip and install the pump. Use the needle nose pliers to set the top holding clip and set it in place. And set the bottom one too. Stand up the washer, install the cabinet, 
And that's it. That's the way you replace a motor coupler. When the motor runs counterclockwise, the motor coupler will turn the transmission center shaft into the agitation mode. Any time that the motor is turning counterclockwise and the motor coupler is good, the washer should agitate. If we don't, the transmission is bad. When the motor turns clockwise, the motor coupler will turn the transmission gears and the bottom part of the clutch will turn. Any time that the motor turns clockwise and the motor coupler is good, the bottom part of the clutch should turn. If we don't, the transmission is bad. This is the part that turns the bottom part of the clutch when it is attached to it. This is the brake and drive tube. The white plastic piece in the middle is the brake cam driver and is part of the clutch. The bottom part of the clutch will turn the brake cam driver. And this will turn the brake and drive tube making it spin. The brake and drive tube has two tabs and the basket drive block has two grooves. The basket drive block will lock the tabs in the grooves and the spanner nut will tighten the basket drive block on the brake and drive tube. Like this. This will give you a better understanding on how the transmission on the clutch works and it will help you to determine if you have a bad clutch or a bad transmission in your washer. When the washer finishes the rinse cycle, it starts to drain the water out. The clutch assembly will not turn until the washer is empty of water and the timer stops for about 10 seconds. When the timer starts the motor again, then the clutch assembly starts turning and the spin cycle starts. If the clutch assembly won't turn, then you have a bad transmission. If the clutch turns but the washer won't spin, check for a bad basket drive block, a bad brake and drive tube, or a broken motor coupler. Let me show you on a transmission outside of the washer. This part in the transmission is what it turns the clutch when the clutch is attached to it. This is the brake and drive tube. And this is the cam driver part of the clutch and this is how they work. When the clutch turns, it will turn the cam driver, releasing the brake and spinning the brake and drive tube like this. Since the spin basket is attached to the brake and drive tube used in a basket drive block, when the brake and drive tube turns, the spin basket will spin. These two grooves in the basket drive block will mate with these two tabs in the brake and drive tube, like this. The spanner nut will secure the spin drum and the basket drive block to the brake and drive tube like this. And that is the way that the transmission works on the spin cycle. This will help you understand how the transmission works and it will be easier for you to determine if you have a bad transmission or not. Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Remove the agitator cap, the agitator dog's guard, the agitator holding screw and remove the agitator
make sure that the washer is empty of water. Lower the drain hose into a container to catch any water left in the pump. Remove the drain and fill hoses and remove the cabinet. Lay the washer on the floor and remove the wire harness from the motor and the frame. Disconnect the hoses from the pump. Remove the motor holding brackets and remove the motor with the pump attached. Remove the three transmission holding bolts. Remove the bad transmission. You will need to install a new motor coupler on the new transmission and on the motor. And you will need to remove the motor plate from the old transmission and install it on the new transmission. You will need to remove the clutch from the old transmission and install it on the new transmission. Remove this washer. Remove the C-clip. Remove the locking spring. And remove the clutch. Install the clutch in the new transmission. Install the locking spring. Install the sick clip. And install the washer. Install the good transmission. Install the three transmission holding bolts. Install the open motor holding bracket and install the motor. Set the motor holding brackets in place and screw in the bracket screws. Install the pump hoses. Install the wire harness to the frame and to the motor. Stand up the washer and install the cabinet. Install the agitator. Screw in the holding screw. Install the agitator dog's guard. And the cap. That's it. That was a way to replace a bad transmission. Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Remove the agitator cap, the agitator dog's guard, the agitator holding screw, and remove the agitator. Make sure that the washer is empty of water. Lower the drain hose into a container to catch any water left in the pump. Remove the drain and fill hoses and remove the cabinet. Lay the washer on the floor and remove the wire harness from the motor and the frame. 
disconnect the hoses from the pump. Remove the motor holding brackets and remove the motor with the pump attached. Remove the three transmission holding bolts. And remove the transmission. Use a small screwdriver to remove the compression ring. This ring is the one that holds the cam driver in place. Remove the back cam driver and install the new one. And install the compression ring. Remove this washer. Remove the C clip. Remove the locking spring. And remove the clutch. Install the new clutch assembly. Make sure that these cuts on the transmission align with the tabs in the clutch. Like this. Install the retaining ring. This ring will hold the clutch in place. Install the C-clip on the grooves on the shaft like this. And install this washer. Turn it around until it falls in place. Install the transmission. Install the three transmission holding bolts. Install the open motor holding bracket and install the motor. Set the motor holding brackets in place and screw in the bracket screws. Install the pump hoses. Install the wire harness to the frame and to the motor. Stand up the washer and install the cabinet. Install the agitator. Screw in the holding screw. Install the agitator dog's guard. And the cap. That was a way to replace the clutch. Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Remove the agitator cap, the agitator dog's guard, the agitator holding screw, and remove the agitator. Make sure that the washer is empty of water. Lower the drain hose into a container to catch any water left in the pump. Remove the drain and fill hoses and remove the cabinet. Remove the top cover. Remove the spanner nut using the TV123A spanner nut wrench and a hammer. Remove the spin drum.
and remove the basket dry block. Lay the washer on the floor and remove the wire harness from the motor and the frame. Disconnect the hoses from the pump. Remove the motor holding brackets and remove the motor with the pump attached. Remove the three transmission holding bolts. Remove the bad transmission. Grab the brake and drive tube by the cam driver and turn it counterclockwise to release the brake and pull it out at the same time until you get it out. To install the new one, apply a little bit of grease and set it in place. Turn the cam driver counterclockwise to compress the brake and push it in until it's set in place. Install the good transmission. Install the three transmission holding bolts. Install the open motor holding bracket and install the motor. Set the motor holding brackets in place and screw in the bracket screws. Install the pump hoses. Install the wire harness to the frame and to the motor. Stand the washer up and install the basket dry block. Install the spin drum and a spanner nut. Use the TV123A spanner nut wrench to tighten the spanner nut. Make sure that it's nice and tight. Install the top cover and install the cabinet. Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Remove the agitator cap. Remove the agitator holding screw. And remove the agitator. Open the controls panel and remove the cabinet. To undo the tabs, press down and pull them out like this. Undo each one of the tabs on the top cover. and remove the top cover. Remove these metal and plastic pieces. To remove the spanner nut, you will need to use a TB123A spanner nut wrench. Wiggle the spin drum to break it loose and then take it right out. Use a hammer to remove the bad basket dry block like this. This is how a bad basket dry block will look. View the how to install the basket dry block video clip next. This is a view of a new basket dry block. You will need to make sure that the tabs or ears 
in the break and drive tube are okay. Straighten them out, but be careful not to break them. If you do so, you will need to replace the brake and drive tube too. Install the basket drive block. Install the spin drum. Screw in the spanner nut by hand as much as you can. Use the TB123A spanner nut wrench to tighten the spanner nut. Make it as tight as you can. Make sure that the seal is good and in place in the top cover. Push down on the top cover to snap the tab in place. After making sure that the seal is OK, align the top cover in place. Push down on it to snap all the tabs in place. Make sure that all the tabs have snapped in place. Set the plastic and metal pieces in place like this. And install the agitator. Screw in the agitator holding screw and install the agitator cap. Jump the gray and white wires in the lid switch wire harness like this. Lower the controls panel and set the timer in the spin cycle and pull the knob to turn the timer on. Open the washer door so you could see it spinning and connect the washer into the wall outlet. See how fast it's spinning now? That's the way it should be working. Close the washer door and remove the jumper from the lid switch wire harness and connect the harness to the lid switch. Then lower the control panel and close it. Disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. Open the controls panel and remove the cabinet. Tie up the back panel to the tank like this. Follow the wire harness from the motor to above the water mixing valve. Find the solid blue, red, yellow and white wires and cut them up like this. Strip about one inch from the wire tips of the wires going down to the motor. Please make double sure to strip the tip of the wires going to the motor only at this time. Tie the white and yellow wires and the red and blue wires like this. This will cause the motor to run on the clockwise direction on spin. Cut this end of an extension cord and strip the two ends like this. Tie leg one of the extension cord to the white yellow wires and leg two to the red blue wires like this. Connect the extension cord to the wall outlet. If the washer motor starts and the washer starts spinning the motor should be okay. Tie the white and red wires and the yellow and blue wires like this. This will cause the motor to run on a counterclockwise direction on agitation. Tie leg one of the extension cord to the white red wires and leg two to the yellow blue wires like this. Connect the extension cord to the wall outlet. If the washer motor starts and the washer start agitating the motor should be good. Unless the motor overheats then you will need to replace it. 
If the motor hums, but it won't start, disconnect the extension cord. Make a jumper from a piece of wire coat hanger. Flatten the two ends, bend it like this, and use electrical tape to insulate it. Disconnect the wires from the stack capacitor. And use the jumper to jump the two red wires like this. Connect the extension cord to the wall outlet. If the washer motor starts and the washer starts agitating, the star capacitor is bad and you must replace it. Disconnect the extension cord. Remove the jumper wire and replace the star capacitor. Use some insulated butt connectors to splice the wires back into the wire harness like this. You will also need a good wire crimping pliers. Replace the motor if you need to. And install the cabinet. And that's it. That's how you test the motor.